the Mandela Effect, time travel, the butterfly effect, the multiverse. What does it all mean? How's it all connected? Well, let's get into it. What caused the Mandela Effect? It's a question that has spawned an incredible number of interesting theories, but not yet a definitive answer. So the goal of this series is to explain every theory out there and let you decide what makes the most sense. I've covered quantum immortality, as well as the simulation theory so far. So today we're talking about my personal favorite explanation, time travel and the butterfly effect. So like the video, subscribe now, and let's get into some really strange stuff. Time travel is defined as the act of traveling through time into the past or the future. As of now, scientists theorize that time travel can be split into three potential ways. A fixed timeline, a dynamic timeline, or a multiverse timeline. So I'm going to break down each of these for you right now. A fixed timeline proposes that time is linear and set in stone. Any changes you make to the past won't matter because we will ultimately end up with the same result. Let's say you make it so that the creator of the soda, Dr. Pepper, never made Dr. Pepper. A fixed timeline is where, even then, somehow, the person that is supposed to create Dr. Pepper still creates Dr. Pepper, and your actions made no difference. You traveling back in time and modifying things was already a part of the timeline, and you are simply fulfilling your predetermined role. Meaning it might be cool to have a time machine and to feel like you're making a change, but in actuality, everything you're doing is exactly what was supposed to happen. Because of everything I've explained, I feel like the Mandela Effect has the least chance of existing on a fixed timeline. Time travel interference wouldn't change anything outside of exactly what was supposed to happen. I'm sure someone out there could speculate an example where the Mandela Effect could exist, but this kind of timeline seems like the most unlikely. The second potential way time travel could exist is the dynamic timeline. Any changes you made to the past will absolutely affect the future. Let's use Dr. Pepper again. If you make it so that the creator of Dr. Pepper never made Dr. Pepper, we simply wouldn't have Dr. Pepper today. Perhaps some other brand would have taken its place. Perhaps Coke or Pepsi would instead have gained a larger market share. Whatever the case, the change in the past absolutely has an effect on the future. In a dynamic timeline, the Mandela Effect makes perfect sense. Changes to the past will cause differences in the future. The third theory of time travel is the multiverse timeline. The multiverse timeline theorizes an infinite number of parallel universes. Because of this, your actions will only have an effect on whatever timeline you're on. So for example, let's use Dr. Pepper one last time. In the multiverse, every combination of Dr. Pepper existing, not existing, being slightly different, being vastly different, and every other differing variation exists in some timeline. In the multiverse timeline, the Mandela Effect could be perfectly explained by saying we are shifting back and forth through parallel timelines. Shifting to a different timeline could result in vast differences or something as simple as a logo being slightly different. It's a really goofy thought, but that's the theory. Now that the timelines are explained, we can go deeper into this concept. We could argue the theoretical possibility of time travel using a dynamic timeline or a multiverse timeline, as well as the insane potential implications of each regarding the Mandela Effect. So to keep this video from being three hours long, I'm moving forward with a very simple blanket statement. Here's that statement. If time travel exists and is used at some point in the future to return to the past, then it is safe to assume time travel exists right now. Someone walking around today could be of another time entirely, and more than likely, we'd never know it. So assuming that's the case, where does the Mandela Effect come in? Am I implying that the Kit Kat logo changed because some future person in the past drew an extra dash? No, nothing that specific and silly. But if this theory is to be believed, we need to understand the butterfly effect and how that's the key that ties all this together. The butterfly effect is essentially defined as a small change in the past can over time create a big change. The idea that the death of a butterfly could eventually have a far reaching ripple effect on subsequent historical events made its earliest known appearance in a 1952 short story by Ray Bradbury called A Sound of Thunder. Now, the butterfly effect leads into chaos theory, mathematical theories like the Lorenz attractor, recurrence, predictive weather pattern models, and even into quantum mechanics, but all that's for another time. Today we're solely looking at the butterfly effect in relation to time travel. Imagine today there is a barren and empty field. Now imagine someone went back in time 100 years ago and planted seeds all across that empty field. Now, in the present day, that field could be covered in plant life. Trees, bushes, grass, flowers, all kinds of life. A vastly different outcome than when we started. All this to say is that a small change can have rippling effects in time. Here is a geographical real-world example of the butterfly effect. In the Republic of Chad, 
in Central Africa, on the outskirts of the Sahara Desert, there is a valley called the Bodele Depression. It was once a lake that died long ago. But dig far enough into the ground, and its soil is still filled with nutrient-rich matter from microorganisms that lived there in the past. From October to March, winds from the east pass between two mountain ranges and across this ancient lake bed. When the winds climb to over 20 miles per hour, they pick up that ancient dust from the Bodele Depression. This dust is blown west all the way across Africa and out across the Atlantic Ocean. That dirt, soil, and debris from that one small valley in the Republic of Chad supplies over 50% of the nutrient-rich dust that fertilizes the Amazon rainforest. Meaning, an ancient lake between two mountain ranges dying off tens of thousands of years ago is the cause of the Amazon rainforest we know today. Imagine that for a second. A dying lake in Africa created the Amazon rainforest in South America. That's one incredible geographical example of the butterfly effect. But what about more human examples? A young man of artistic talent spends all of his time and effort creating art. Now this young man lives in a place and time of massive economic uncertainty. The future seems bleak for most people like him because of a previous war and its truth and reconciliation. He applies at a prestigious art school in Vienna, but fails to get accepted. Instead of moving forward in life and continuing his art, he took a different path, which led him to a much darker outcome. This man was Adolf Hitler, former leader of the Nazi party. Like most alternative history, it's impossible to know for sure. But we can speculate that if Hitler had been accepted to art school, perhaps his life and the lives of tens of millions of others affected by his future actions would have gone a different way. These are examples of the butterfly effect, a small splash leading to a massive tidal wave. September 28, 1918. A British soldier, Private Henry Tandy, fighting near a French village, lines up a shot in his rifle. He sees it's a wounded German soldier and decides not to take the shot. The man was already injured, so he spared his life. Little did Henry know at the time, but the man he spared was 29-year-old Lance Corporal Adolf Hitler. Yes, this is yet another example of how our timeline would have drastically changed had a seemingly small change taken place. In retrospect, it's an easy decision to call, but in the heat of the moment, I'm sure Henry felt as though it was the right thing to do. There was no way he could have possibly known the ramifications of his one decision, but just like the butterfly effect, that one small change could have changed so much. When we talk about what caused the Mandela effect, this is what we mean by time travel. Someone from the future traveling back in time and inadvertently or intentionally making small changes that over time create massive differences. This could explain small things like the dash in the Kit Kat bar, but also explain the massive and previously unknown historical events that now apparently happen like the Black Tom explosion. Check out my New York Mandela Effect video on that because it is my favorite Mandela Effect of all time. It is beyond absurd. Now, let's assume for a second that the Mandela Effect is 100% confirmed real and is caused by time travel and the butterfly effect. We're still left with many questions. Questions such as, do we still exist on the same timeline we started with? Such as the dynamic timeline theory? Or are all of these changes the result of jumping between parallel dimensions by means of the multiverse timeline theory? Is there even an original timeline? And if so, could we ever go back to it? And would we want to? Or would it be so different from what we expect that we wouldn't be able to mentally cope with the changes? Honestly, who knows? Someone watching this right now could be the first person to travel through time and inadvertently or intentionally break reality for the rest of us. It's highly unlikely, but it's still a spooky thought. Actually, now that I think about it, what if it's just a fan of the Mandela Effect in the future, going back in time and intentionally or unintentionally creating the Mandela Effect? And that all of this is just one hilariously disturbing time paradox? What if this video sets that idea into motion and one of us ends up creating the very thing that we're talking about right now? If that's the case, could you please add a few more zeros to all of our bank accounts? I say this every time, but I could talk about and speculate on this stuff for hours and hours. It's all so fascinating to me, as I hope it is for you as well. If the Mandela Effect is caused by time travel, is it intentional? And if so, why? If not, then is it just a side effect of the butterfly effect? Or is the Mandela Effect simply a side effect of something much greater than all of us, and we're all just staring at clues instead of the bigger picture? We don't know today, but maybe one day we will.